All right. Uh, good evening. It's Grace Baptist Church, Brother Chris Handham, Grace Baptist Church, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Glad you could be with us. Um, I had spoken last week briefly on a, a topic that we'll be covering for several months here. And as I was doing some studying this week uh, and looking at some things, I found some more messages on it. Um, so it, it'll be a lengthy study in that regard. But it was about prayer. And uh, if... Uh, if you as a Christian don't understand that we live in a time, day and time which we need to pray, then I don't know what, you, what, what you're looking at. Um, but um, we're going to go over some things about prayer, and I just want to list some of them that we, uh, we were going over. Teach us to pray, prophet's prayer, uh, the right position to pray, prayer time, prayer of Hannah, the prayer of uh, Solomon, the prayer of the saints, uh, the patience of prayer, uh, the peace of prayer, uh, when the answer is no, praying in the Holy Ghost, the fruit of prayerlessness. Uh, praying for a nation, uh, and um, uh, one of them th going to the throne of grace. So we were looking at uh, some of these aspects of prayer, um, and prayer should be an integral part of your Christian life. If you're not praying, you're not availing yourself of what God gave you as a Christian to communicate to Him. Uh, God communicates us through to his, through His Word. Amen? Amen. He speaks to us through His Word. He's not using visions and. And, 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 and feelings and everything else. He is communicating to us via the Word of God. We communicate with God via prayer. Amen? Amen. That's the way God has designed it. And so we got a lot of stuff floating around uh, today uh, under the auspices of, uh, you know, say it's spiritual or it's of God. But I know uh, what I just outlined to you that God is speaking to us through His Word. And uh, he, we are speaking to God through prayer. And that's what He's ordained. Now, uh, take your Bible. Uh, go to the book of Luke, Luke, uh, and I want to show you something in the book of Luke. Now, our first, uh, our first um, message in this series, so to speak, will be teach us to pray. Um, uh, there's a, I guess everybody's got a, some people do, they have a, 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 a idea that we automatically know how to pray. Now, uh, when you're sincere about your prayer, uh, in that regard, it is automatic in the sense that, you know, um, God will hear the prayer of a, a sinner because it's sincere, uh, even though uh, it wasn't, it don't, quote unquote, doesn't have the, uh, the outline, outline in Matthew and, and Luke uh, and some other places. Um, but by that same token, the God, uh, he gives us and tells us a, a, an outline, so to speak. He says, don't be like the heathen. Amen. And he says, they, they think they're going to be heard for their much speaking. And so he tells us, yes, there's some things about prayer that we need to understand who we're talking to and how we're talking to God. Um, again, because uh, people, I, I guess, you know, the, uh, there's other aspects of my Christianity that I didn't know nothing about when I got saved. And uh, I had a, I had a, uh, I hate to say it, but, you know, a lot of Christians probably spend their whole life without understanding what real prayer is and just learn the little prayers that we get from our, you know, from our childhood, our youth, you know, uh, uh, what was, uh, uh, God is good, God is great, thank you for this food, amen, um, stuff like that, or I lay me down to sleep, I pray, uh, uh, I lay me down to sleep, uh, if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul should take, you know, little things like, anybody learn those little things? Yes, learn those little things when you were a kid, uh, but then when you become a real Christian, uh, 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 and if the disciples, which we're going to see, if they if they come to the Lord and the apostles, if they come to the Lord and say, "Teach us how to pray," Amen. Then that shows you that um, coming to Jesus Christ is a change of everything that you may have grown up with tradition, Amen. Especially if you were in a Catholic tradition or, or some other tradition that uh, didn't have a biblical prayer base, all right. But there's something very interesting I found here. Some time ago, and it's, it's within the book of Luke, uh, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, they had a, a, a front row seat into all the events of Christ's ministry uh, for three and a half years. Uh, and so they got to see the things that were really important in the life of uh, of Jesus Christ and that would be important in their lives and uh, I, we're going to go through real, real quick here in the book of Luke go to Luke chapter 4 and I will show you some things that they saw in the light of what they asked for notice in Luke chapter 4 and look if you will at verse 33 verse 33 he says in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil uh, that shows this right here there, there can't be devils in the church amen 
And I got a message I preach every now and then. When I think somebody uh, has come in here and they are a devil, I will preach devils in the church. Uh, but he says, had a devil and cried out with a loud voice. Some people think, oh, that there's some kind of mystical, I guess, you know, at the door that the devil can't enter in uh, and, 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 and uh, cause havoc and everything else. Let me tell you something. Uh, the devil's been at this a long, long time. Amen. He's been out there. He knows all. He, remember, brother, let me tell you something. He knows one thing about us: uh, flesh for flesh, all that a man give for his flesh. Amen. He does know that. And so he says, uh, saying, "Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth?" And I heard a preacher preach on this text one time. He said, uh, "He said you can always tell when you got a devil in the church." He said, "Because when you start preaching about commitment and sacrifice." And, you know, giving your all to the Lord, he said, it'll always be the individuals that say, let us alone. <laughs> I was like, man, alive. I said, I, I, you mean I had a devil in me? Uh, but he says, um, he says, let us alone. Uh, 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 what have we to do with thee, Jesus Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him. Uh, and, and heard him not, and they were all amazed, uh, and spake among themselves, saying, What word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out, and the fame of him went uh, uh, out into every place of the country round about. And so they got to see that. Uh, my, my brother, uh, what's going on today when people talk about they casting out devils? It's, it's a bunch of sleight of hand, uh, a bunch of people lying and everything else, all that kind of stuff. Uh, our parents, you know what? They, they got the devil out of us without, with no incantations and everything else. All they did was brought the bell out. Amen. Amen. And you know, magically, the devil left. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He left. Now he now now you know he he'll he'll leave for a while and come back. But let me tell you something. When the when the when the belt got to popping and stuff, he magically left. Amen. But what you know, they they saw that for sure. Uh, and in uh, thirty eight, we find this right here, a uh, uh, same chapter. And he arose and went on the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife, now watch this now. Wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. Uh, and he stood over her and rebuked the fever and left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. And so they're seeing this. They're seeing these miracles. Uh, and just for sake of time, uh, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 16, we find this the miracle of uh, the catching of the fish. Uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 12 to 15, a man healed of leprosy. Uh, and Luke chapter 5, verse 18 26, we saw Christ heal a man of the palsy and telling him sin, uh, don't sin no more. And Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 15, he preaches a parable and he gives the interpretation. Luke chapter 9, 1 through 6, uh, the uh, 12 apostles uh, not only saw, but were given power in their ministry. Um, and we find that now, go here in Luke chapter 9, I want you to see this. Luke chapter 9. No, Luke chapter 10. Now look at this, Luke chapter 10. And verse 1. And after these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city, a uh, place where he himself would go in somewhere two by two. You know what, my brother? That's the number of witnesses. Uh, the day and time, especially the wickedness we live in, it's a good idea to go, go with somebody that can be a witness to what took place. Amen. Because there's people that there's people to get you in trouble just because you know your yours it'll be your word against theirs. And let me tell you something, we living in a society and a time this right here, especially uh, men. Uh, that's why I always uh, uh, challenge young men and young women about dating and everything else. All right, let me tell you something. It's still bad to be alone. Amen. Still bad to be, especially for a young man. It is bad to be alone. Because they can say you did thus and so. It can be consensual. Everybody can agree to it and everything else. But let me tell y'all something. All it'll take is somebody to get mad. That's all it'll take. It'll take somebody get mad and say, okay, you know what? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm cut this off and everything else. And they're like, oh, you're cutting it off. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And we live in a society, this right here, let me tell you something. They say, well, it's not important about the facts. What's important is the accusation. That's what they're saying now. What's important is the accusation. My brother, let me tell you something. Uh, that's what happens when you depart from common sense and the law 
and start just letting emotion run amok. No, it is important. The facts are important. Not just the accusation. Because you can accuse somebody of anything. Now look at this. I've been accused, watch this. I was accused one time by a guy. And he said, Brother Chris wants all the women for himself. I said, he must have to talk to my wife. Because, <laughs> I mean, all the women for himself. I told somebody that. And I, I asked him, I said, I want all the women for myself. Really? He goes, I don't know. I said, I, I said no, I, I, I think you know. <laughs> Just anything. But watch this. He said, he appointed 70 and sent them out two by two. Verse 2, he says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, and would send forth the labors in his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves, carrying neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, nor salute no man by the way. And uh, whatsoever house ye enter, First say, peace be unto the house, and if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And, the, uh, uh, and in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and, and, and to whatsoever city uh, ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as set before you. Heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, uh, go your ways out of the streets of the same and say even the dust of your city which cleaveth on us we do wipe off against you notwithstanding uh, be sure of this that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you but I say unto you that it should be more tolerable in that day for Sodom and then for, uh, then for you uh, for, or rather for that city war unto thee Chorazin and unto thee Bethsaida for in the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Zidon which have been done in you they have great while ago repented sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it should be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despises uh, you despises me, and he that despiseth him, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and he that despises me despises him that sent me. And the 70, now watch this, verse 17, and the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto, unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, uh, be, uh, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding. Here's the important part. In this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen and amen. Is my name written there? The song says on the page is white and fair. Is my name in the book of, in the book of Cobb's kingdom? Is my name written there? Amen. Because a lot of folks, you know what? The very thing that he says don't rejoice in, that's what they're all about. They're all about how the mir miraculous and miracles and all this kind of stuff. But this is where I want to get you. Go to chapter 11. Now, we went uh, kind of real quick there and I told you about some events. Uh, it's no word. Do you know why? Because of all the things that they could have asked. I want you to notice in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. They said, and it came to pass that as he was praying. Now, watch this now. In a certain place. When he sees, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Now, all that stuff that transpired and went on, you know what I mean, uh, casting out devil. you would have thought they would have questions and more, you know, getting detailed. Can I, uh, what about this and what about that? And of all the things they asked, they said, Lord, you know what? Teach us to pray. There is something about the prayer life of Jesus Christ and communion His Father that they saw, you know what, that it was special. Amen? And they wanted, they wanted that relationship with God that they saw Him experiencing. And as a Christian, you know, my brother, let me tell you something. We, we should desire the same. In our prayer life, we should we shouldn't want just uh, simple. You know what I'm saying? As I start out saying, you know, just simple, just little uh, 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 things that we heard as a child. We should want a deeper connection with God through prayer. Amen. I mean, He's given it to us so that we can communicate. So we should desire uh, a deeper connection. But uh, again, as I say, uh, it's it's not if they now watch this. Again, they've done all this stuff. 
We just saw it's chronicle. Again, that's why I say it's not automatic that when you come to Jesus Christ, you know how to go about this thing called prayer. Amen? Because if they're doing all this and still see the need to say, teach us how to pray, then my brethren, who are we to not desire the same? And so this evening, I want to start with just something real simple. And it has to do with this thing, teach us how to pray. Amen? Uh, let me just, you can, you can pray prayer, but it can all be about selfishness. Amen? You can have a gift. You can have a gift. The Bible tells us, it shows us over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You can have a gift, but you know what? If your gift is not used to benefit somebody else, you know what? It, you're, not even you're not taking advantage of the gift that God gave you. Amen. Right? And so, as I always try to tell people, charity is that vehicle which all, all our gifts are supposed to throw, flow through. Amen? And why? Because the gifts are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Then charity, the best gift, is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And then you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, which is tongues, and shows you the abuse of that gift. And Paul rebukes him and corrects him. All right? Now, and so uh, I want to give you this thing. So uh, 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 it, it's written right here, uh, Matthew chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 11. Notice what he says. He says, um, uh, verse 2, and he said unto them, uh, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, uh, 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 thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is dead to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said to them, uh, and he goes on, which of you shall have a friend and shall go in him at midnight and say unto him, friend, uh, uh, lend me three loaves. He says, um, for a friend of mine is, have come, uh, is in his journey, has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he said, uh, and, he, and he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not, for the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot arise to give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will uh, rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Right? Now, uh, uh, for, uh, I want to go to, uh, because this prayer is mentioned in uh, uh, several of the Gospels, but I want to go to the one that's found here in Matthew. Go, if you would, to Matthew. Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Now I want to look at the one here in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Here we are. Matthew chapter 6. Because I detailed some notes here in Matthew chapter 6 about this. And again, Matthew chapter 6 starts off like this. He says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, uh, ye have your, uh, no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And alms is those good deeds. Amen. Nobody's got to know what you do. Amen. God, guess what? God's keeping a list. Amen. Uh, unlike uh, Santa Claus is not keeping a list. God is keeping a list. Amen. Watch this. He says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So when you sound a trumpet and say, Look at me, look what I'm doing. Look how, look what I'm doing. Let me tell you, you've, you've got your reward already. Everybody got to see you, but you, you'll get nothing from God. Watch this. He says, uh, but verse 3, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That shows you how low key it's supposed to be. Amen? Your left, I mean, your hands are both connected, to your, but it's showing you how low key it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be out there. It's supposed to be something that you do for a real desire uh, for that person's benefit in the sight of God, not so you can boast your man and say, look at me. Watch this. Uh, that thine alms may be in secret, thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Now look at verse 5. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Very I say unto you, they have their reward. All right? So you don't have to again make it known that I'm praying now. Uh, in the uh, in the book of Daniel, we find that Daniel opens his windows and pr uh, prays. Amen. 
And they know he does. But I don't think he did that uh, because so they can see he was doing that in regards to a commandment uh, that Solomon, Solomon prayed. Solomon said, if our people get in trouble, he said, you take them to foreign lands because of their sin and everything else. He said, yet if they, he said, when they pray, if they turn toward this face, at place and pray for this place, he said, thou hearest them. Amen. So that's what I believe Daniel was doing. It wasn't like this. Amen. Now watch this. He says, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And I remember a preacher saying one time, he said, uh, that guy used to come on the radio and talk about prayer. And he said, all right, let's enter into our prayer closet. And he would, you would hear the door squeak. <laughs> now, what is, is, if you don't have to have a prayer closet. And, and you know, uh, what, what if you don't have a, it's like a, a Superman. If you couldn't turn it, what? If he didn't have a telephone booth, he couldn't be Superman. <laughs> I mean, I remember one time I watched a Superman movie and he ran up to the phone and it wasn't a booth. It was one of the little half booths and he was like, <laughs> you know, so it, this is, you understand, this is not this exact type thing. You got to go into a car. Well, uh, let's pray. And then you, you like, all right, and you, 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 we out fixing to pass out some gospel tracts or something like that. And one brother was like, well, well let, we got to go back in the church and go into the closet. No, we don't. <laughs> he says, but when thou prayest, enter in thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. See, there it is right there. It's the secret. It's, it's, you're not making this open. It's you and God, okay? And he says, uh, in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when thou prayest, use not vain repetitions. God is not hard of hearing. Matter of fact, God knows what you need before you even ask. Amen. He says, uh, uh, as the heathen do. See there? That's something that heathen do. Uh, you find that illustration in the book of Kings when they was trying to get fire to come down from heaven. Uh, they was all jumping around and cutting themselves and uh, saying, oh, Baal, hear us and everything else. And they went up from the morning to the afternoon and they was war slam out. They done jumped on the altar and broke down the altar. And Elijah, I like what uh, the Bible shows that if you go back there and read, Elijah gets there and he played it's 63 words, he said. 63 words was his prayer. And when he got done, the fire of heaven came down. It consumed the, the sacrifice, the bricks. It, it, it turned everything into dust. Amen. So it's not about this uh, God hearing your prayer. Now, I know the Bible, uh, I know the Bible shows that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed a bunch. And I know just right here, you know, there's nothing wrong with going back. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with it. Because it says he prayed again. But this repetition, this repetition, as God said, that's what the heathen do. He says... When ye pray, uh, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father know what things ye have need of before ye ask. So I like Matthew chapter six because he tells you what not to do. Amen. Amen. And so when I, I, that's what I said about prayer. It's not an automatic that we come to God and we know instinctively how to do this thing. Amen. It's outlined here in the Bible to show it. And so there's some things I, uh, in this prayer that I want to uh, uh, give us this evening. First of all, I want you to notice this right here. He talks about relationship. It, it starts off, it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. First of all, he talks about our Father. A who, that's the who. It's God is our Father. That shows that you have a relationship now with God. Now, I know God is the Father of it all in the sense of creation. Amen. There's nobody in this world, you know what, not here because uh, God the Father created us. Amen. We didn't, we didn't, uh, uh, we're not aliens and all this kind of stuff. God is our creator. Amen. Amen. But when it comes to this and prayer, our Father, there's a relationship. Let me tell you, it's like you going up to your Father. Amen. Amen. It's going, you going up to your Father. So it talks about this right, this relationship, our Father. God is your spiritual Father. Uh, watch this. Go if you would to John chapter 8. Jesus Christ talk, uh, talked about this. John chapter 8, and look if you will at verse 42. John 8, 42. See, uh, some people got this thing where God's the Father, He's their Father, but you know, they have no relationship to Him. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, then guess what? You don't have a relation with God the Father. John chapter 8, watch this. Uh, Jesus said this. John chapter 8, verse 42. Jesus said on them, If God were your Father... Ye would love me. 
That's Jesus Christ. He said, uh, for I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I myself, but he sent me. Amen. Uh, if you, uh, God is your father, then you know Jesus Christ is his son, and this right here, and you know him as your savior. Amen. It's a relationship. God our Father. Uh, watch this. Go to Hebrews chapter 12 and look at this verse. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 8. Uh, a lot of people are claiming they know God, but you know what? They don't know Jesus Christ uh, as their Savior. Hebrews chapter 12 and look at verse 8. Hebrews 12 and verse 8. He says this. Uh, but uh, look at this thing. He says, but if ye be without chastisement, uh, whereof all are partakers, uh, then are ye bastards and not sons. Amen. Let me tell you something. Uh, if, if Jesus Christ is not your Savior, and you don't know the Father through Jesus Christ, because he that hath the Son hath the Father also. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. And so, it's a relationship. And you have that relationship with God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. It's not Mary. Mary is not the mediatrix. Amen. No, sorry. It's Jesus Christ. There's one meaning between God and men. It is the man Christ Jesus. Watch this. Uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Look at this. John chapter 1 verse 6. It's a relationship. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Watch this. There was a man sent from, uh, 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 from, uh, from uh, God whose name was John. The same uh, came for a witness to bear witness of the light uh, that all men uh, through him might be believed. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh to the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own uh, received him not. But as many as received him, be, uh, them gave he power to become the sons of of God. You see that? Uh, which were born. Now watch this. Which were born. Not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of what? God. You have a relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ being born again. Right? Well, we talked about that this morning. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God. Amen. The gospel. And so, first of all, it's, it shows you there's a relationship. Uh, God wants a relationship. I keep trying to tell people God wants a relationship. He not, he's not looking for robots. He's not looking for, he wants a relationship with those. And the relationship is had through Jesus Christ. Amen. No other person. No other way. All right? Now come back to our text. Matthew chapter 6. He wants a relationship. I like what somebody uh, wrote on the church thing coming down here. It says, um, God doesn't want to be a part-time father. He wants full custody. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, I said, you know, that's right. I said, you don't want part. Y'all know what? He don't want part of your life. Amen. Amen. He don't want, he don't want, let me tell you something. Uh, our parents, as your father and your mother, let me tell you something. When you were brought in this world, way before you understood it, let me tell you they didn't give you part of their life. Let me tell you something. They made, they made you the center of, your, of their life. Amen. They took care of you and, and fed you and educated. When you couldn't do it, they made you their life. Amen. He wants a relationship. He don't want just a weekend custody, a high buy type thing. Uh, most people, you know what they do? They'll give God, let me tell you, they go, oh, I got this relationship with God. Let me tell you, if you got a relationship with God, a true one, let me tell you, it lasts beyond uh, uh, 45 minutes in a, a Sunday morning service. Amen. It's Monday through Friday, and it's in the wee hours of the night. It's, let me tell you, it's in the good times and definitely in the bad times. Amen. Our Father, Amen. So he talks about this right here, relationship. Next thing, I want you to see this right here. Uh, he says, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, he said, Our Father, uh, which art in heaven, uh, hallow, uh, he says, uh, ha uh, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Let me tell you, your Father's name, you know what? God's name is holy. Amen. Uh, there's, there, there, God said this right, you shouldn't take his name in vain. Now, I know a bunch of people think that taking God's name in vain is simply when you use the word God and use the word damn shortly thereafter. i never forget that Brother Baker said uh, him and Buzzy was helping a guy change a tire one time and he was trying to get the lugs off of it and everything else. And the guy just kept using the Lord's name in vain. And um, Buzzy said, if you quit asking God to damn the thing and bless the thing, maybe you can get that lug off there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
uh, but and so most people, but they don't understand it as um, uh, blaspheming the name of God and using God's name as vain is just using it lightly. You know, people, they so, uh, we live in a day and time, it, it's like invoked, it's, uh, oh God. That's using God's name in vain. That's calling on it without any real regard or reverence. Amen. The Bible says, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Amen. And you say what you want to. You, your, your father's name and who he is. And everything. Let me tell you, when you was a kid, uh, there's several things you fight over. And it has to be your honor. Let me tell you, nobody talked about your mom and daddy and all this kind of stuff. Now, I know we as a kid played the dozens. <laughs> we played the dozens and made fun of each other's mama's name and everything. I told you, my mama's middle name was Mayday. Mayday and Tony Smith would walk down the hall. We'd be standing in the line for lunch or going from class to class. And he walked by going, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. We're <laughs> mayday, Mayday, we're taking fire over here. Mayday, Mayday, we're going under. <laughs> right? And, it's a, and I told you his mama, she had, had, had some scar tissue from where she had burned her arm there. And I said his mama had a rubber arm. So when I walked by him, I would go. <laughs> and we would just mess with each other. But again, y'all know when it gets down serious, let me tell you something. Uh, somebody talk about your mom or dad in a serious name. Them, them was those fighting words. Amen. Amen. Honor. Second of all, not only relationship, but I want you to know this the right direction. Look at verse 10. He says, Thy kingdom come, here it is, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice that's right direction. You know, that's God's will. No, uh, God's will. Have you done God's will? You know what one of God's wills is? That you believe on His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's one of the will. Of, this is the will of God that you believe on His Son, Jesus Christ. Watch this. Uh, go to Matthew, cha Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. It's right direction. Are you traveling in your life and this is prayer now. Are you asking God to direct the affairs in your life? Amen. To lead, are you asking Him to like lead you in the path of righteousness for His name's sake? Amen. Are you, are, uh, if you read the book of Psalms and Proverbs, you'll find you all, you, especially in the book of uh, Proverbs, Psalms rather, you'll always see the, uh, uh, the request of the saints asking for God's leadership and direction. Amen. And my brother, you say what you want to, you know, let me tell them that we definitely need it in the day and time. You better be praying for God's direction. You better not be running around in your flesh and your limit, our limited wisdom and understand. You, let me tell you something. Uh, there's spiritual wickedness going on in high places. Amen. You're going to need God's direction. Uh, look at this, Matthew chapter 7. You're going to need God's will. You, and you want to make sure, let me tell you something. There's so much deception going on, you better make sure you are in God's will. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. Amen. I always, I always try to warn people, this is a future event. Right here, that you're reading a future event that will happen to some people because they are out of the will of God when it comes to salvation. Look at this, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Notice, this, this is not somebody out in the street smoking dope. This is somebody around in religious things in circles, but they're missing the will of God. He says, so many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name have cast out devils, and thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, uh, I never, watch this, no relationship. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of what? Iniquity. Let me tell you something, friend. It's thy will. Have you done God's will? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, Christ. Watch this. Go to, uh, uh, it's it's uh, doing God's will and understanding what the will of the Lord is, right? But the Bible says, uh, 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 um, redeeming the time because the, 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 the days are evil. Amen? And it says, uh, be, it says, uh, um, be not, uh, it says, understanding what the will of the Lord is. Uh, my friend, let me tell you something. We need, we need God's leadership. Amen. Uh, go, if you will, look at this. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. I don't know about you, but you know what? I find the best time for me to pray is early in the morning. Uh, before, watch this, before the day. And I always like to say, uh, seize the day before the day seizes you. 
Amen. Seize the day in prayer. Talk to God about the day ahead. Amen. Uh, not my, my brethren said, what you want? You know what? I, I, plan, I like planning out my day. I got this in mind to do and everything else. But you know what I like to ask? I said, Lord, you know what? Uh, 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 rearrange my plans and everything else so that, you know what? I may be sensitive and use me to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I can get so busy. I'll, I'm, I'm a list guy. I like writing things on a piece of paper and list. Right? So you're not floundering around. So I write, do it, get this done. And as I do it during the day, I like checking them off. You know, it makes me feel like, you know, I've really done something. So I check them off. I, like, I did this, I did this, I did this, right? But my brother said, Would you, uh, what about this, the will of God? What about something spiritual, amen? Most of the time, my stuff is carnal. Uh, in a sense, you know, it, uh, uh, let, me, let me get the car. I got to get the car to the shop. I got to get a haircut, which I didn't get on my list, so I couldn't check it off. So I got to, that's, that's scheduled for Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying, what about, while, I'm, while we're doing all that stuff, what about what God wants us to do? Second Peter chapter 3, look at this. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. But as long suffering to us, we're here. It is God's will. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. And uh, again, you know what that shows you? That shows you uh, our mindset should be this right here. Not my will, but God's will be done. Amen. John 6. Uh, again, I quoted that one earlier. It's to believe on him. And so, uh, it's, it's, it's the, uh, the, the right direction. My brother, let me tell you something. If you're not walking in God's will, you're going the wrong, you're going the wrong way. And again, my brother, it, it, it's true. It's a, uh, it's a surrender. You know as well as I, you've been a Christian very long. You know it's a surrender each and every day, my brethren. To, you know what? Uh, to let God have the day versus, you know us, us just dictate the whole day. Amen. Amen. So it's thy will. The right direction. Then I want you to notice this right here. Uh, come back to our text here in Matthew chapter 6. He says, uh, thy, king, uh, he says uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. You know what that is? Requirements. Requirements. My brother, let me tell you something. I, it's a sad commentary. And I, I gave you an illustration this morning about uh, the preacher putting a spoon in a woman's Bible. And she didn't find it for four months. That means she didn't read her Bible for four months. My brother, let me tell you something. You can't live off last week's blessings. Amen. Would you, uh, 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 bread that you uh, uh, toasted. Just, just leave, uh, leave it out. And then go back to it next week. Is it going to be good? Y'all remember when God gave a manna in the wilderness? Right? Remember what he told them during the week? He said, don't do what? Huh? Don't get no more than you eat. He said, don't save none. Remember that? He gave him manna, right? But he said on the sixth, on the seventh day, he said, uh, on the sixth day, he said, I'm going to give you manna for two days. Amen? Remember that? What did they do? You know what some of them did? They did it anyway, didn't they? What happened to it? Huh? It bred worms, the Bible says. Got wormy. My brother, let me tell you something. Uh, God, do you, do you eat on a daily basis? Unless you're not fasting or something like this. Do you eat on a daily basis? Bre- uh, a daily? Some of all, we got a daily routine about what we're going to eat for breakfast. Amen. Even the people at the, where you go and buy the food, they, they know when you come in, they go, oh, I know, okay. That one wants this, this, this. They know what you want and how you want it. Amen. My brethren, so a spiritual food is just like that. Amen. And so many times, you know what, Christians, we don't avail ourselves of the fresh bread. Brethren, there ain't nothing like fresh bread when you smell it. Amen and amen. Y'all ever driven by, well, we, we happen to live by a Sunbeam Bakery, bakery right here on Highway 80. And let me tell you something, when you go by there and you can, when you can smell fresh bread, there ain't nothing like it. Amen. And let me tell you something, people, uh, uh, some Christians, they're not even availing themselves of what God will give them on a daily basis. Those yellow little booklets, I don't care if you get it through uh, uh, periodicals, everything. There's a little thing called daily bread. Y'all seen those? <coughs> daily bread. It's for us. It's our requirement spiritually, my brother. Let me tell you something. Daily bread. It's our want. It's, it's, we need more than just physical, my brother. Let me tell you something. We need spiritual nourishment. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Look at this, John chapter 6. 
In John chapter 6, here's Jesus Christ. And he's talking about this spiritual nourishment. Watch this. John chapter 6, uh, begin reading here, verse... Uh, um, Verse 30... No, that's too far back. This is... Um, what for is... Huh? Yeah, so I got started. Yep, start at verse 32. I got, I got a starting point, verse 38, but start at verse 32. Uh, then Jesus said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, uh, well, verse 31 says, uh, Our fathers did eat man in the uh, desert, uh, as is written. That's what I was telling y'all. And he said, and he, uh, he gave them bread from heaven. Uh, then said Jesus unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, uh, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father give you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that coming down from, uh, the he from heaven and giveth his life unto the world. Uh, verse 35, he says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Uh, he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. Uh, my brother, let me tell you something. I think a lot of Christians are dying. You know why? Because they don't know how to get in this book and feed themselves. Amen. 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 Too many times, let me tell you something, brother. We we live in a den, and this is give us. Let me tell you something. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, there's a, 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 a verse in Psalm Psalm 19, verse 14, and I, I quote it to myself often when I go to start studying my Bible and reading something. And I say, Lord, I said, open my open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of Thy law. Amen. It's there, but you know what? I want God to open my eyes so I can see it. Amen. And I need, well, I, let me tell you something, your needs, your needs tomorrow may be way different than my need. Amen? But your need can be met and my need can be met within the precepts of the Word of God. My brother, let me tell you something, it's not going to be met by what's going on in this world. Again, they've forsaken all this kind of stuff. Well, brother, let me tell you something, uh, uh, let, me, let me move on here quickly, but I want to show you some. Look at this, John chapter 6, and look at verse 66. He says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto them, uh, unto the twelve, will ye, uh, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered uh, him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Here it is. Thou hast the what? Words of eternal life. My brother, we're not going to get it from Hollywood. You're not going to get it from Fox. You're not going to get it from Newsweek. You're not going to get it from a, 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 a NBC or ABC. You're going to, let me tell you something. To feed the inner man, you're going to have to get in God's book. Amen. Amen. And God said, give us, and it's in our prayer, give us this day. God will give it to you. Our daily bread. Daily. I don't like, I don't like uh, moldy bread. So it's, it's our, our requirements. Uh, and ask, again, asking you shall receive. You know what, some part, people are trying to, trying to live a, we're trying to live a Christian life in its fullness, being full of the Spirit. But you know what, but you got stale bread. Amen. It don't work like that. Daily bread. And uh, come back again, if you will, to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Now watch this. He says, uh, give us this day our daily. Let me tell you, so you know what? That's, that's a privilege. Amen. But watch this. Uh, and forgive us our debts. Watch this now. Now here's, here's remission. Forgive us our debts. It says, as we forgive our debtors. Amen. You know what that is? Our wrongs. Our wrongs and their wrongs. Uh, my brother, say what you want. You know what? Uh, how can, you know what? Uh, a Christian should be able to forgive people. Because he's experienced God's wonderful forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen. I really believe that's why we got so much hate going on in our land and the country. You know why? Because people don't, you know, people can't forgive each other. People can't move on because you know what? They have not experienced the wonderful forgiveness that's found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Really? They, they, have, they have not experienced it. Brother, it's wonderful to know that you have actually literally been forgiven. Amen. Forgive us. Watch this. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter, and I like this illustration, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 18. Look at this. Matthew chapter 18. Verse 23. Now we'll, we'll come back a little bit. Verse 21. Here's the, this is I, I read stuff on forgiveness, and everything, but this is like this is the uh, in the Word of God and Jesus Christ giving the story is the it's the premier on about forgiveness. He says, verse twenty one. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? We must think that he said seven times. We act like he said seven times. We keep a list. Of how many times? I remember the time. Let me tell you something. Uh, 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 somebody said this right here. You know what? How to have a happy Christian life? Keep a short list. Keep a short list on people that have uh, 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 have transgressed against you. Amen. Forgive them. Amen. Watch this. He says, Jesus said to them, I, I, I say not unto thee until seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Now, I joke with my wife every now and then and everything else, and I tell her, I said, that's four hundred. It's got to be 492. <laughs> I, 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 I observed my wife before I married her, even as a young man. And, you know, I, I saw she had a wonderful sense of humor. Amen. She could take a joke because if she couldn't, man, I'd have been gone a long time ago. I, something would have happened. It would, it would definitely have been an accident, a horrible accident. It would, in my sleep, right? Yeah, I would, have, I would have swallowed my toothbrush in my sleep. How did that happen? It would, that's why I said it would have been a horrible accident, right? But I'm just saying, uh, uh, the Bible talks about forgiveness, amen? My brother, let me tell you something. Uh, 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 people need to see that Christians can forgive each other, Amen. Look at this, verse, uh, 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 verse 24, he says, verse 20, 23, he said, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain, uh, uh, certain king which had take account of his servants. And when he begun to reckon, one had brought unto him that owed him ten thousand talents. For, but as for much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded to be, uh, him be sold and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with what? Compassion. And loosed him and forgave the debt. But the same servant, now watch this now, let's talk about forgiveness. It says, forgive, it says, what, what did it say over there in Matthew chapter 6? Matthew chapter 6, it says this. It says, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. He says, but the, uh, the, uh, 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 but the, verse 20, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants would owe him 300 pence. And laid hands on him and took him, I always like this, took him by the throat. <laughs> that visual picture. Can you say he grabbed the guy by the throat? I mean, he got the guy. Hey, y'all, he got the guy all jacked up against the corner. Got him by the throat. And he says, uh, uh, um, where does it say? Took him by the throat. Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant, look at this. Fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him and said, Have patience with me and I'll pay thee all. And he, you know, watch this. It's showing you. He wouldn't, I mean, this guy just did the same thing. Just asked God to forgive him. Let me tell you something, the devil, boy, he really messes with us with this one. You know why? Because you know what? I can ask God to forgive me and say, God, help me do better and everything. And somebody cut me off in traffic. And let me tell you something, I'd be wishing I had a, 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 a what do you call them things? Uh, like on a tank. What is that thing? The turret. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just get off and come out of the prayer closet, uh, thanking God for forgiveness and everything else, and all of a sudden somebody cut me off, and I'm. <laughs> he says, "Fellow servant, fell down his feet, and saw him saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all.' And he would not, but watch this, but went and cast him into prison till all should be paid. The, the, uh, uh, till he should pay the debt. So, when I watch this, look at how bad his soul. When his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And came and told under their Lord what the, all that was done. Why? They just saw the Lord forgive this guy. Then the Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. 
Shouldest not thou have also have compassion on thy fellow servant? Because remember, tell some brethren, if that guy, watch this, if if he didn't owe the, the, the Lord the money, then you know what? How did this guy owe him that money? He didn't need it now. I, I, I read a, a thing where a lady said she, said she was in the drive through and she said she was in the drive through and she said she was trying to get her order right and everything else. And she said that uh, she, it was a car behind there. And she said, well, I was trying to get the order right. And you, can, you know, you're trying to hear and everything else. And she said, the lady started honking the horn behind me. And she said, boy, I'm so glad I'm a Christian. <laughs> she said, I started singing songs. You know, me happy in Jesus and everything. She said, and this lady was honking. And she said, I could see back there. She said, it was her in that car. And she said, uh... She, uh, there's some kids back there and she could see them jumping around and everything else and all this kind she was thinking you should make the little bad kids sit down quit honking your horn I'm trying to do this that and the third so she said when she got up to the drive through she said the Lord smote her heart and said you know what maybe that woman's having a bad day maybe she's in a rush she's trying to get maybe she got a sick child so you know what that woman did she said, I'm, she said she paid for her food she said what did they order behind me she said I'm paying for their order She said, I'm paying for their, their order. Amen. I remember, I remember, brother, I, remember time, uh, I told you all about this time but, that my kids went to Puerto Rico and uh, they missed the plane coming back. It was Marcus, Janelle, um, it, was, it was Luke, Janelle, and Naomi. They went there on a missions trip to help Brother Manny. And they missed the plane coming back. It was six, I paid $600 round trip for them to go there and come back. All right. And because they missed the plane, now it's a one-way ticket. If you ever flown anymore, one-way tickets are more expensive than round-trip tickets. Now I had to pay an extra $600 to get my children back from Puerto Rico. Man, he called me on the phone and he was all apologetic and everything else. And I just lit into him. And he was like, oh, my car and everything else. And he was talking about his car and the need of a car and everything. And I just, I was so, I was like... How can you send my child, put my children in your care? I send them down there and everything else. And if the last thing you want to do is take somebody's children and not get them back to the United States. I was mad about that thing for days. But the angrier I got, the more I was just like, man, this, I said, that's just ridiculous. You know, man, how are you? But the Lord, you know, the Lord, he spoke to my heart, smote my heart and said, you know what? Maybe you could have got him there if his car was running right. So, you know, what I did, I said, you know, that's what the, this is the first person I ever started supporting. It was Manny by himself. I said, I'm going to support. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, he'll never have that trouble again because I'm going to support him so he can get an another car. Amen. I could have went on and been mad. Amen. Well, my brother never tell you something. I know how many times God has forgiven me. Amen. Amen. That's what he's talking about. Verse 33. Shouldest thou not have a compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I have pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother that trespasses. Amen. It's about, my brethren, let me tell you some remission, forgiveness, our wrongs. Uh, come back, if you will, uh, to Matthew chapter 6. Look at this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This last thing is, part, is about rescue. Rescue. Lead us not in temptation. Brother, 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 let me tell you something. You know as well as I do, because of our flesh, we are prone to wonder. Amen. 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 We are prone to wonder. And as a society grows uh, 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 more liberal and, and, and no conviction is everything, it's easier to wonder. Amen. I like what somebody said, the older you get, the more you wonder. You wonder, let me tell you something, you wonder what's going on, you wonder what's happening, you wonder, you walk in one room from the other, and you wonder why you walk, <laughs> you just become a wonderer. <laughs> but I know this right here, brother, uh, lead us not to temptation, that's rescue, that's help us, amen. 
My friend, let me tell you something. Uh, somebody I heard a preacher say one time, he said, my flesh has been faithful to me every single time of my life. And I was like, what? He's like, my flesh has always been faithful to me. It's never failed. Me. It's, never, it's never let me down. It's always done what it's not supposed to do. Amen. Rescue. Lead us not into... To, you know, a, a lot of people have a... a, a, they have a, a why is it said that? That's not saying that God's going to... That's, that's a, a request to be rescued. Amen. Look at, look at it. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And look at verse 9 and 10. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Uh, look at verse. Look at verse ten. And this is a cross reference for that. If anybody ever asked you about that, here's the cross reference for that to un explain this verse. I remember one time we had a family text thing, and they were asking, "So, brother, uh, they said, you're a preacher. What what does this verse mean?" And I told him, "I said, here's the cross reference for. It. Look at verse ten. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Look at this. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Do you see that?" It's a desire. Lead us not to temptation. It's not God going to lead you. It's a desire for God to keep you back. Guard me. Put, you know what I mean? Move me here and everything else. Uh, uh, because you know what? In and of myself, you know what? I'm, succe I'm uh, 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 susceptible to failure. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Uh, it's, it's, uh, go to, uh, watch this. Look at Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Brother, you realize this right here that uh, 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 people that get out of the way and things happen in people's lives, uh, it's, it's, it happens usually, my brethren, one day is the tipping point. Do you understand that? I mean, it can be building up, but I'm saying one day could be the tipping point. And that could be that very day that, you know what? You can ask God for protection that day. Amen. Matthew chapter, I mean, uh, uh, Psalm chapter 25. Look at this. Psalm chapter 25. He says, uh, talks about leading, leadership. Look at this. He says, uh, verse, uh, verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I, I, I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies, thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions according to thy mercy. Uh, according to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. O Lord, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek he, will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and testimonies. For, sake, uh, for thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of, secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and, his, uh, and, he, will show, and he will show them his, his covenant. Uh, mine eyes are, are ever toward uh, the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of that. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distress. Look upon my affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Amen. You see, it's a desire of leadership of the Lord's direction. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's rescue. It's the way God would have us go. Amen. And my brother, let me tell you something. The sad commentary is Christians are falling each and every day. Amen. I read a statistic not too long ago, and it said, now it's, it's mind boggling. 1,400 churches per month are closing. 1,400 churches. That's, that's mind. My brother, you say what you want to do? You look around this nation. Do we need more God? Do we need more church life? And 1,400 a month are closing. 
Teach us to pray. Amen. Teach us to pray. Relationship. Our Father which art in heaven. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Uh, uh, the right direction. Thy will. Thy will. Are you in God's will? Uh, the, uh, uh, the requirements. Our daily breads. Our wants. Uh, uh, the remission. Forgive us our debts. Our wrongs. And then rescue. Rescue. Keep us in the right way. Amen. That's a prayer that you can pray every single day. Amen? Amen. Teach us to pray. Amen? Again, one thing that every Christian should desire is a, a fruitful prayer life. Amen? Amen? A fruitful prayer life. Uh, you realize this, right? Every revival that ever took place, it was preceded by Christians praying. In every evangelical endeavor there was any success, it was preceded by Christians praying. Amen. We are told, you know, we are told, pray without what? Ceasing. We are told that, that prayer shouldn't be our last recourse. It should be our first recourse. Pray. Amen. I like that little song, Er, you left your uh, home this morning. Did you think to pray? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. And so we will. We'll be going into teach the Lord teaching us how to pray. And we'll be looking.